Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. And today, today I want to talk about armor skills. This is a question that's cropped up quite a few times from some of you guys in the comments with you wanting to know a little bit more about some of the new armor skills present on some of the gear. A few weeks back, I uploaded an armor video to show you guys all of the low rank armor I encountered during my time playing in Japan. But as mentioned, I needed to cut out any sort of numerical data since those values are still subject to change. And while that still applies in this case, what I thought I'd do instead is speak more broadly about the skills we've encountered thus far and give you a general overview of what they do without diving into the nitty gritty numbers. For this, I've taken all the information gathered from both my time playing at Gamescom earlier this year and at Capcom's HQ just a few weeks ago. It should go without saying that this is by no means the complete list of skills, not by a long shot. There will be plenty more that we have yet to encounter, but this is at least a list of everything we've seen thus far. And for those of you guys that are new to Monster Hunter with World, then very briefly, armor skills are abilities that are present on individual pieces of gear, and by having them equipped, they provide you with certain bonuses. These bonuses can range from things as simple as small attack or defense boosts to more granular things like boosting the effectiveness of an abnormal status effect like paralysis or poison, or even allowing you to eat faster, climb without using so much stamina, increase the amount of ammo that your slinger can carry, etc. The list really does go on, but in short, these skills will influence your gear choices as you progress through the game and your build sets around certain skills, often to complement particular weapons. But that's something I'll cover in greater detail a little closer to launch. For the time being, let's just talk about what we've seen so far. If you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to comment down below and let me know if you guys have any questions. Starting at the top, we have your bog standard attack boost skill. This offers you an increase to your attack power, and when you get it up to the higher levels, you'll also get some bonus affinity thrown into the mix. There are seven different levels to the attack boost skill, and if you want a refresher on how the new skill system works compared to how it works in the past, then I will link the armor skills video I did after Gamescom down below. You then have Critical Eye, which increases your affinity, and again, there are seven levels to this skill, with each level giving you a further percentage increase. Also, for those of you new to Monster Hunter, affinity is basically your chance to deal more or less damage with a weapon attack. Positive affinity typically means your attacks have a chance to use 125% attack power, meanwhile negative affinity is a chance that some attacks will only do 75% attack power. There's also a new skill called Affinity Sliding, which increases your affinity by an amount for a short time after a slide. Slides being those situations where you sprint down a decline surface and you begin sliding down it. From here, you can then go into a jump attack or another draw attack, so gaining a temporary affinity boost following this could actually be quite useful if it then stacks on top of the other stuff you may have. This is also a one point skill, so it's binary, either on or off, no additional tiers to it. Water attack increases your water element attack power, and there are three levels for this, and then there's also equivalent skills for thunder, fire, ice, etc. There's also a poison attack skill, which increases the rate of poison buildup. This also has three levels. Rather interestingly, it seems in world that abnormal statuses have been broken into individual skills as opposed to being lumped into one skill. So there is also a skill for paralysis attack, and while I haven't encountered it yet, I'd be willing to bet there's also one for sleep. You then have Artillery, which strengthens explosive attacks like Gun Launch Shells, Wyvern's Fire, Charge Blade File Attacks, and Sticky Ammo. This is a 3 level skill. Special Ammo Boost increases the power of Bowgun Special Ammo. Those are the shots like the Gatling Fire, the Sniper Shot of the Mines you place in the ground. Plus, it also boosts the power of the Bow's Dragon Piercer Attack. This is a 2 level skill. Then moving on to a few more defensive skills, you have Defense Boost, which increases your defense, but at higher levels, it also improves your elemental resistances, and there are seven levels to this skill. You then have various resistances, an example being Water Resistance to increase your resistance to water type attacks, but also at higher levels, you get additional defense bonuses on top. This has three levels, and there are again equivalents for Thunder, Fire, Ice, etc. Additionally, there are also options for the abnormal status too. So again, things like poison resistance will grant you protection from the effects of poison, a three level skill. And the same applies for paralysis, stun, and I would imagine sleep. You then have windproof to grant protection against wind pressure. This skill has five levels and at the max, it will completely negate all wind effects, both big and small. Muck resistance reduces your mobility impairments while stuck in monster muck, i.e. the stuff that Baroth and Gelatados throws out. This is a single level skill. Evade extender increases your evade distance, and there are three levels to this. Meanwhile, evade window extends the invulnerability period whilst evading. 
and this one has five levels. Sadly, I didn't get a chance to test this one, so I can't comment just yet on how it works for things like Evade Lancing, but that is something to look into at launch. Stealth is a skill that makes it easier for monsters to lose sight of you, and this has three levels. Constitution reduces your stamina depletion when performing stamina draining moves such as evading. This has five levels. Meanwhile, Marathon Runner slows down stamina depletion for actions which continually drain stamina, things like sprinting. Stamina Thief increases certain attacks ability to exhaust monsters. This has three levels. Hunger Resistance reduces maximum stamina depletion over time, and at the max level, it prevents the stamina cap from decreasing. In other words, while your stamina as the resource will go down, your actual stamina bar will stay fixed for the duration. Master Gatherer allows you to gather more quickly and also prevents attacks from knocking you back whilst gathering. This is a single level skill. Scoutfly Range Up expands your Scoutfly's detection range, useful for tracking monsters. Slinger Capacity increases the loading capacity for Slinger ammo obtained in the field. And at the max level, this increase also applies to the monster specific items that they drop when they flinch. If you guys haven't seen this, then there's an example of that in my Tobikodachi gameplay, but when you make a monster flinch, they can drop a special item, normally a red glowing item on the floor. You can load this into your slinger, and when it's fired, it will then cause the monster to flinch, making it a very useful item to have. Scent Hound increases your scout fly's gauge fill rate when you find tracks and other traces left by monsters. Barbecue Master improves your skill at cooking meat. Health Boost increases your health, quite simple. There are three levels, with each level giving you an additional further increase. Slugger makes it easier to dizzy monsters. Horn Maestro increases the effect duration of hunting horn melodies. Entomologist decreases the chances of destroying the bodies of small insect monsters, allowing you to carve them, which makes this incredibly useful for farming things like Vespoids or Banabras and anything like that. Although, quick tip, if you guys don't have this, you can fire your slinger at those bugs instead, and that usually kills them without them getting destroyed. Quick Sheath speeds up your weapon sheathing. Honey Hunter increases the quantity of honey you receive when gathering in the field. Aqua Expert improves mobility in water, and at the max level, it also prevents any slowdown and improves your evasion whilst in the water. Speed Eating increases meat eating and item consumption speed. Intimidator reduces the chances that small monsters will attack you after spotting you, and at the max level, it will just straight up prevent them from engaging you altogether. Palico Rally powers up your Palicos, increasing their attack and defense. Fortify increases your attack and defense every time you fall in battle up to two times, so if you're new, fighting a monster that you're unfamiliar with, and you're taking a beating, this will actually help you following a cart. Speed Crawler increases your movement speed whilst crouching. Stamina Surge speeds up your stamina recovery. Pro Transporter increases your speed while transporting items and decreases the likelihood of dropping them. Item Prolonger extends the duration of some item effects. Speed Sharpening speeds up weapon sharpening when you use a whetstone. Spore Puff Expert lets you recover health when using Spore Puffs. Botanist increases the quantity of herbs or other consumable items you gather, with each additional level giving you one extra item per gather. Guard reduces knockback and stamina depletion when guarding. Focus increases the fill rate for weapons with gauges and the charge rate for weapons with charge attacks. Jump Master prevents attacks from knocking you back during a jump. Mount Master makes it easier to mount monsters. Cliffhanger decreases stamina depletion when evading while clinging to walls or ivy. Recovery Up increases the amount recovered when restoring health. Recovery Speed speeds up the recovery for the temporary damage. Now that's the portion on your health bar that is red. Typically, whenever you take a hit, you will lose some health, but then the portion of that will be red. That is the portion that will typically regenerate over time. So this skill will then just speed up that process. And then finally, this one is a little different and it's the only one that we've seen thus far, but this is a set bonus skill, only active if you have the required number of pieces equipped. In this case, it requires three pieces of Anjanath gear, and that will net you Anjanath power, which temporarily reduces stamina depletion when health is at 40% or lower. Since the Anjanath gear was the next tier of rarity I encountered when playing, I'd be willing to bet that from that point onwards, set bonuses will start showing up more frequently. But since that's where I had to stop playing when I was in Japan, I wasn't able to see any further than that. So, those are, based on all the footage I've recorded from Gamescom and Japan, all the armor skills we've seen in-game so far. That is not, as mentioned, all of the skills, not by a long shot, but it is what we have to work with right now. I appreciate you don't have any numerical values, but for the time being, at least you now have a broader idea as to some of these skill options available. If you have any questions, then by all means let me know in the comments down below, but in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.